we were surprised, if this was planned. And I'll say on the boob note, this is gonna be TMI, but just hearing this strong heartbeat, get up and then eat the granola bar, it is coming right up. Stay off Google. What I'm planning to do for birth, I have been looking forward to recording this video for so long. Today I am sharing my first trimester recap with you guys. I do want to say that this video might be a little bit longer than the other recaps that I plan to do throughout my pregnancy because I have a few extra things that I want to add in here. I want to talk about finding out if we were surprised, if this was planned, all that jazz. It's been one of the kind of top questions, so I want to talk about that. And then I will share a week by week overview of my symptoms, changes, how I've been feeling. I also want to share some of the books that I've been reading, the apps that I've been liking, and also some of the other YouTubers that I've found to be super, super helpful during the season. And then lastly, I'm going to finish off with some questions that I asked for over on Instagram. Those are just generic questions. Some are first trimester related, but some are just baby related, pregnancy related, all that stuff. At the time I'm recording this, I am 14 weeks. I'm almost 15 weeks actually. And I say that kind of tentatively because I've had a couple of scans where I've actually been measuring ahead and so I'm not entirely entirely sure especially because I don't have or before I got pregnant I didn't have a super regular period my timing is a little bit weird but according to our first scan which supposedly is supposed to be kind of the most accurate our due date is 11 11 which is so special there aren't a ton of fall birthdays in my family especially among all the kiddos and so i'm really really excited to have a fall baby i found out on march 1st and i have a whole video if you guys want to check out that finding out was such a special moment and for me i was very very surprised and i will kind of share more in depth about this because essentially i have shared my whole journey of going off the pill over the past couple of years and i'll give a little rundown i'll try to give the spark notes version because it is so long and complicated essentially we liked the idea of trying for a baby by actively trying i mean tracking my cycle and timing things for when i'm ovulating that's typically when people are trying they say that some mean by trying that they just aren't preventing at all to me actively trying is really timing things for ovulation i got off the pill at the end of 2021 and wanted to give my body six months or so just to kind of reset possibly longer if it took longer and it has taken so much longer than that because I have not had a regular period since I went off the pill. My cycles are extremely long. It took me forever to get my period back originally after getting off the pill. And even over a year later, my cycles were still so long. Some would be 40 days, which for me was good. Some would be 60 days. And I was so confused about what was causing this. I have shared a lot of this in just past videos. And that's not to scare you because I know a lot of people don't have that experience. And so July of 2022, we decided that we were just going to stop preventing and leave it in God's timing because we weren't sure how long this was gonna take with the thought in mind that we would start actively trying when I turned 25, which is in July of this year, if you know it hadn't happened by then. In October of 2022, I decided to go to a preconception appointment. It was actually a nurse practitioner that I did this with and she did a lot of blood work and really tested a lot of my thyroid levels, my hormone levels. I even did an ultrasound to kind of check for PCOS, and endometriosis, and nothing came up. The only thing that was kind of abnormal was my vitamin D levels were pretty low. And so I started taking vitamin D and she also encouraged me just to one, minimize stress, but also to start tracking my cycle. I started diving into the fertility awareness method of really trying to figure out if my body was ovulating because I didn't have this cookie cutter cycle. So typically in a year, you'd have kind of 12 chances if you will at ovulating around then if you have like a normal 28 day cycle around then but for me my cycles were 60 days sometimes longer and so I was only ovulating probably half as much as normal so when I found out I was surprised by the fact that it happened in this timeline because I just expected at least for my circumstances that this was going to take much longer and so it was just the biggest blessing for both of us we were so thankful that 
it happened in this timeline but surprise in the best way possible i mean this is something that we have wanted we knew that we were getting to the point where we were ready to start a family and so i'm just so thankful we are both so beyond excited and so according to my calculations when i found out i thought i was around three weeks pregnant but i believe i was four weeks pregnant which is still pretty early i actually took one of those kind of cheapo tests i test all the time because i don't really get my period super often and we are in a place where it can happen and so i had taken one of those and i remember i didn't see a second line and so i threw it away and then a few hours later i checked the trash and i saw the faint line i'll insert a photo but they say if you don't test within the timeline it's not super accurate and so that's when i took the more kind of official tests and found out that we were pregnant and so for me i didn't really have a ton of pre-test symptoms because i was so early along but looking back a couple of the things that were a little bit different than normal for one i had a much higher appetite and that was something that went through my entire first trimester. And I also noticed, I actually have some old vlog clips where I cut out these clips after I found out, but I was talking about just feeling out of breath. <sighs> I just can't catch my breath. I remember I ate a salad and it just kind of made me feel gross after. I'll sometimes get grossed out by what I'm eating at the end, but those were things in hindsight. When I took the test, I definitely didn't have any major symptom that was making me feel like i was pregnant so in that fourth week the only thing that i really noticed were one my boobs started to get very sore that week that was specifically on march 7th i started noticing that my boobs were a lot larger a lot more sore it wasn't a crazy pain or anything it's just kind of this dull aching of your boobs and that was weird to me at this point when i found out i was pregnant i did have an increased appetite but I was trying to eat a lot more nutrient dense food because I had heard that the food aversions come later down the road and that definitely happened for me. And so I was really thankful that I was like, I'm gonna try to feed this baby all the good stuff it can get before my options are more limited. And also at this point, Mr. Cash right here started sleeping right by our bed, which I would like to think that he knows that I'm pregnant and that's the reason why, because he would never sleep there before. He would sleep in our bathroom, he'd sleep in our living room, but never right at the foot of our bed. And so that to me was really sweet. Week five was pretty much the same. The only thing that started to hit me at this week was I was very, very tired. I would fall asleep at night when we were watching movies. The fatigue was just next level. I'm someone who likes to get a lot done. I like to do a lot in my day. I try to be productive and especially with recording these vlogs, I like to have a bunch of different stuff to show you guys, but I was feeling so tired. I started taking naps, which I'm not a napper. I'm not the best sleeper. This is the first time in my life where I can just set a timer and take a 30 minute nap. And I've really been letting myself take that time because sleep is so important right now. One of the most important things if you have the time to, and especially right now, because you know, down the road, we would like to get pregnant again. We're also gonna be taking care of a child at the same time. And so I know the next pregnancy is not gonna be nearly, I don't wanna say it's easy, but it is going to be tougher i'm not going to be able to take as many nap breaks and just chill out so i've really been kind of milking that right now week six was a big week this is when things really started changing for one i started feeling nauseous this week and i remember when it first started happening i thought it was just from a couple of nights of not great sleep because sometimes i'll just feel kind of off when i don't get really really good rest but once it lingered for a few days i started to realize that it was the nausea making its appearance. And trigger warning, I am gonna be talking about vomiting. If this is something you don't wanna see, you can skip over probably this whole section because that has been a marker of my entire first trimester, but I threw up for the first time here. And my nausea, I will say at this point, wasn't too, too bad. It really was just when I woke up in the morning, I had to eat right away. And by eating right away, I mean I lay down and I have a granola bar by my bedside that I put there before I go to bed and I grab it and eat it before I get up because if I get up and then eat the granola bar, it is coming right up if I start moving. And not everyone feels this way either. I don't want this to scare anyone because even going back, I would do it all again hands down 100%, but I just wanna be honest. I wrote down, I only want meat, yogurt, and cheese. I really wanted high protein things at this point. Coffee sounded absolutely disgusting. I stopped wanting anything to do with coffee, which if you know me, I love coffee. I love my morning coffee. And if you watch my vlogs back, you'll probably notice that I typically do a little morning shot of my coffee, but 
Mm -mm. I am just now starting to like coffee again, but I wanted nothing to do with it this week. I had exercise helps the nausea. I had craving greasy, unhealthy food. I wanted all the fast food I could get at this point. I had tart smoothies taste really good. And that was the one thing that I could really handle that was a little bit healthier, but it did come up a couple of times. And then I had water taste weird. That was one of the saddest things for me because I try to drink so much water, but water just had that weird kind of metallic taste to it. But my sister Lindsay actually told me, she said to just squeeze lemon and try to do lemon water and that helped a ton. Anything that's kind of tart, sour. Week seven, this is actually when we had our first confirmation appointment where we got to see the baby and you know see if there was a heartbeat all of that and i wanted to talk about this because this is something that was so hard finding out that you're pregnant especially when it's super early along even if it's not super early along typically when you call your ob or your midwife they will not take you for an appointment i think typically the earliest is around six weeks but mine kind of preferred closer to eight weeks because a lot of times it is hard to detect a heartbeat by then it's hard to see anything and you know the last thing you want to do is go into an appointment and then not have that confirmation and then feel really nervous when maybe it's just too early along and so I totally understand that but that was so hard just hoping everything was okay I remember I would hop on Google and start kind of googling statistics which I would just say don't do that's one of my biggest tips is just stay off google and i will share some of the resources that i did like for me the one thing that really helps just calm that anxiety was praying praying in the morning praying at night praying over our baby that was really the one thing that would just give me peace but i cannot explain how surreal it was when Aiden and I went to that first appointment. They did the first ultrasound. I don't have any footage of it because we were just so excited and you couldn't actually hear the heartbeat at this point, but they did detect one. This is when they try to see when your due date is, how far along you are. And we got to see just this tiny, tiny little bean, so small. I think baby was the size of like a blueberry at this point or something, it was so tiny, but it was so, so special. And I think ever since that appointment, it made all the other things just go so much easier because I knew there was a baby in there. I knew what it was all for. For this week, I had that, I stopped liking any kind of strong scent. So perfumes, candles, soaps, I hated any scent. That stuff wouldn't make me gag or it wouldn't make me nauseous. It just really didn't appeal to me. I did not not like it. I also had Chick-fil-A wraps with this emoji because I can't even tell you how many of the Chick-fil-A grilled chicken wraps I've eaten so far, especially during the first trimester. For some reason, these wraps were the one thing that had, I think they have like lettuce and carrots in them that I could stomach. And it felt like I was getting some sort of nutrients in, even though I would cover them in honey mustard. That was the one thing that just sounded so good to me, which is probably the worst thing when you're nauseous, but for some reason it tasted so good. And so I probably had two of those a week during my first trimester. I've spent so much money at Chick-fil-A in general. For week eight, all I wrote was feeling the worst I felt so far, throwing up every day. And when it comes to the nausea, the only thing that really helped me feel better was one, just getting it up. If it was gonna come up, I just let it come up. Thankfully, I don't have a fear of vomiting. I know that's a big, big trigger for a lot of people. I obviously don't love vomiting. They do have medication that can help too, but I just prefer to kind of get through it if I could. The only things that really helped my nausea were just eating right when I woke up, like I mentioned, and then also eating every two hours after that, having just like little meals. Honestly, sometimes I'd have big meals too. I was eating a lot the first trimester because that was the one thing that it seems counterproductive. If you're vomiting, why would you want to eat a lot? But it would help. I remember the worst morning I had was the morning that I didn't eat a lot the night before and it was so bad. You don't want to get in a pit where you have nothing in your stomach, which obviously in the morning you typically don't. And so I would just recommend eating a big dinner too and just feeling really, really satiated. I know a lot of people talk about these preggy pops. I did order these, but I'm gonna be honest, I didn't find these helpful. I know a lot of people do kind of sucking on any sort of hard, sour candy and constantly having that going down your throat. I just don't really love the taste of artificial hard candy. I like other candy, like sour candy I've really been about this trimester, but these for some reason just didn't really help me. And I'll also say that earlier on, I was really hoping to feel nauseous because not everyone does. And that is totally normal too. It doesn't mean that things aren't going well if you're not feeling nauseous, if you're not throwing up. Some people are just very blessed and don't deal with that at all. But for me, it really was a reassurance that there is a baby in there. There's still a baby in there. Quite literally when I was over the toilet, I would remember that and just 
thank God for the fact that I was dealing with this because I know that there is a baby that is growing. And even a couple weeks ago, I really stopped feeling nauseous, but I started getting back into that kind of anxious spiral that I had around like six weeks or so. And it is crazy that the next day after that, I remember just going to bed feeling really, really anxious, feeling really worried about the baby. The next day, after not really feeling nauseous for a little bit, woke up and had a very nauseous day, threw up in the morning. And it almost felt like a reassurance from God that baby's in there, baby's okay right now. Week nine, I had craving fruit. I've really been into fruit this pregnancy. Pineapple, watermelon sounds so good. I also had very bloated and the bloat, I will say is next level. I looked more pregnant at week nine than I do now because you just have so much going on in there. Your digestion really starts going crazy at this point. So the constipation, gas, all that stuff. I can't even explain. I would wake up and just have so much air in my stomach and it was really uncomfortable. I also had feeling very ugly, feeling the opposite of the pregnancy <laughs> glow. And that was also because I had it this week. Skin is horrible. My skin has been breaking out like crazy. These are reasons according to kind of those old wives tales that I am thinking that baby is a girl because of the acne that I've had. I'll insert some photos. My acne has been crazy, but I've always dealt with acne. So this is not anything abnormal for me. I just think that my skin just handles hormonal changes like that. But that is why I have thought that baby might be a girl if that's true. And then I also had keep waking up in the middle of the night, struggling to fall back asleep. My sleep has been a little bit crazy at night. I feel like I'm able to take naps and everything during the day, but at night it is a little bit harder. Week 10, I had skin feels like sandpaper. I feel like my skin has really gotten drier. Boobs aren't quite as sore, though still large. And I'll say on the boob note, this is gonna be TMI, but I'm just gonna share. I did not realize that not only your boobs change, but your nipples change too. And it's actually so cool because they get really, really dark. And originally I was like, what is going on? My boobs look so much different right now. I Googled it and there are a bunch of different reasons, but one of the ones that I thought was so cool, babies actually see contrast really well, especially that early on. So it helps them with latching and breastfeeding when your nipples are darker, which is just so cool. At week 11, I had still throwing up. I think that this is when things really peaked. I know I said week eight was the worst, but week 11, I remember was not a great week. And I also had first midwife appointment. I'll talk about this when I talk about like birth and all that later on. And this was the first time that we actually got to hear baby with a Doppler, which was so, so special. And I remember when she did it, she told me this might take a little bit, don't get worried. Sometimes it's hard to find. If we can't find it, we'll do an ultrasound. But I remember within five seconds of her going over where she thought the baby was, just hearing this strong heartbeat. And it was the coolest thing ever. I wish I recorded it just so I could listen to it. I do have one from a different ultrasound that I'll talk about, but it was so special hearing that and yeah, nothing really compares. Week 12, I had less morning gagging, which is great. I had weird digestion. This is the first time I actually ran three miles, which I was proud of because I did not feel like running the first trimester, which is totally okay. Again, was taking all the rest that I could. I had that my chest got really veiny, especially around my boobs. I just noticed like these really blue veins, which I've heard is normal. I also did a blood test to find out the gender and that one too, you can also do genetic testing. I'm so excited because I'm headed to go do some blood work to figure out the gender of our baby. So I'm going to go. I think it takes about a week or so to get results and we'll have to plan some sort of gender reveal situation, but I cannot wait. This is me stating right here that I have a feeling that baby is a girl, but deep down I'm just feeling like it's a girl. It might be because I have a lot more girl names picked out that we agree on. Just got out of my testing, just got my blood drawn, and I just wanna say that I love the place that I'm going to. They are just so sweet. It's such a different experience than I've ever had with any other kind of healthcare provider. We went back and forth if we wanted to do, because I just heard mixed things about genetic testing and no matter what we planned to carry this baby and so it wasn't going to change our minds about anything but honestly i just wanted to do this test because i wanted to find out the gender as soon as possible we still don't know we're planning a gender reveal my sister actually has the results but she told us that baby's healthy and everything looks normal and she knows the gender too which is really exciting alternatively if we didn't do that test we would find out at our 20 week anatomy scan but I was impatient, so we did do that. But yeah, I did go back and forth because I just heard mixed things. And also I wasn't sure if our insurance covered it. 
you know, I still am not entirely sure how much is gonna be covered. So we might be getting a big fat bill. It still was reassuring to have that. And I also wanna mention this too, because I actually had a private ultrasound done at 12 weeks because at my 11 week appointment, I didn't have one. Typically when you receive care from like any sort of midwifery practice, they are really about kind of lower intervention because we could hear the heartbeat with the Doppler. My midwife didn't want to do an ultrasound because everything was normal and looked good, but I just really wanted to see our baby. So we did do a private ultrasound appointment, which is something I didn't realize that you could do until I heard some other women talking about it in my app that I'll talk about later. But I went to a place called Little Bellies in Dallas. You go in with a sonographer for like 15 minutes. It's super quick it was around $50 so it was kind of expensive but that appointment was so surreal because the baby had just formed so much since our first ultrasound you could really see so much she also did like a 3d scan which is cool i know a lot of people do that later on too with the 3d scan heard the heartbeat and that to me was just really special because you could see much more but yeah that was something that i didn't realize when even going to an ob i'm pretty sure too you don't have ultrasounds every single appointment typically you're going once a month until you're further along i know that there are mixed thoughts on getting ultrasounds so regularly but i did want to get one i don't plan on getting another one until our 20 week anatomy scan which will be really exciting and at that appointment that's when she told me she thought I was further along she thought that I was a week ahead but I'm still going by my original due date and obviously the baby's gonna come when the baby wants to come I'm not holding so tightly onto the due date that's really just a loose guideline I know especially your first pregnancy you tend to go over and then week 13 my last week everyone kind of counts things differently but for me i consider this my last week i had coffee sounds better i did start drinking coffee just recently i'm not going crazy because i did cut back a lot before i got pregnant to try to regulate my cycles i try to minimize caffeine and so i still am not having it as much as i did say a year ago but it is nice having that little boost in the morning i had appetite for healthier options it's starting to come back still not fully but i am able to eat a salad and enjoy that more now. Feeling full fast when eating. This is something that's been different because I before was so hungry. I never felt full in my first trimester, which I know a lot of people start feeling that way in their second trimester. But for some reason lately, I start eating and I'm immediately full, which is not normal for me because I do eat a lot and I am, I would consider just hungry person but yeah that's been different especially at dinner time that's when i notice it the most i had so much more energy i am feeling much more like myself now still a little bit nauseous here and there but not too bad and then i had so thirsty typically i drink honestly maybe one and a half of these a day which is not great i should be drinking more i drink three of these a day now and talk about having to pee all the time yeah that's about to start to really kick in because i have been so thirsty it's like a thirst i've never known before i wanted to share some of the books that i have been reading too these are all ones that except for one of these i've finished all of these and i know everyone's different with this i have been told not to go crazy with trying to get advice and trying to research too much and I would say I'm in a good sweet spot right now, but for me and my personality type, a lot of times having information, especially regarding labor and delivery, and more so when baby comes, learning about babies and newborns, I feel really equipped having that knowledge. It doesn't stress me out, but everyone's different. And I just wanna say that I don't think that you should buy every single book because that is just not good. And I talk to so many of my mom friends and so many of them say that when they had the baby, things just came naturally and they learned so much. I do plan on taking some classes too, but these are books that I really enjoyed reading. This one is probably my favorite pregnancy related book. One of my friends actually recommended this. It's called The Mama Natural Week by Week Guide to Pregnancy and Childbirth. I read this when I first found out I was pregnant. It has so much good information, but it's written in a way that's just not condescending or assuming. If I pick up a book and it has that vibe, I immediately stop reading. So it's just not where I'm at right now. And this one, I really, really enjoyed. I'll have these all linked down below too. Secondly, this is one that someone sent me. I have no idea who sent it to me, but I loved this book. It's called Nurture, A Modern Guide to Pregnancy, Birth, Early Motherhood, and Trusting Yourself and Your Body. This one I especially like for how it talks about labor and delivery, different options for that. And it also is written in a way that's just unbiased. So many resources that you will find, especially when it talks about those topics, are just so biased and just not encouraging to read. 
and I felt really, really empowered after reading this and I really, really enjoyed it. I'm all about finding positive resources right now because I think that really is what you need, especially when you're already worried, anxious, you've never been a mom before, you've never had a baby before, it all is so new. This is great, love this book. I also have what to expect when you're expecting. I really didn't read all this, so I guess I should say I haven't read all these because I found that this was just more my speed, but this is like the classic been around for a while book. And I did read this one for a while too. This one was actually a gift from my mom. It's called The Mother's Almanac, the most complete book ever written on loving and living with small children. I love this book. This one also speaks more about kind of childcare and child development. And just the way that this is written and illustrations in it are so witty and fun to read. This just made me more excited more about having little children. And I really, really love this one. It's just written in such a timeless way and really enjoyed that one. I also have The Natural Hospital Birth, The Best of Both Worlds. Not necessarily my favorite ever, but I do feel like this has good information in it. And then lastly, this is one that I'm reading right now. It's called Simplicity Parenting, Using the Extraordinary Power of Less to Raise Calmer, Happier, and More Secure Kids. And when it comes to apps, I wanted to share this app because I spend so much time on this app now. I'm sure you've heard of it. It's called What to Expect. It's their app. And this is so great because it gives just a week by week kind of summary of where you're at in your pregnancy. It talks about baby's development. It shares how big your baby is each week. I also really like that they have different forums too. And I'm I'm usually not a forum gal, but I really, really like these ones. I'm in one that's first pregnancy, and then I'm also in one that is November 2023 babies. I spent a lot of time in that because they're obviously on the same timeline as me. People just ask questions about things that they're going through. They'll send like sweet little messages, and I just find it to be really enjoyable, but I check this all the, all the time. Also forgot to mention the YouTubers that I've really been liking. There are two specifically. One is Beth Grace Moore. Love her videos. She has so much good just baby product content, videos about newborns, videos about her birth. And I just really resonate with her attitude. She is so calm and chill and just kind of go with the flow. And so I've really been liking her videos. And then I also watched a ton of Jessica Hover when I first found out. I just really identify with mom content that's very approachable and just not very know-it-all because that to me just makes me feel more intimidated when I'm watching content like that. And I love her videos especially because she's very much just, it is what it is, but gives really good advice. And she has three kids, I believe. And so she obviously knows so much, but it just comes off in a way that is really approachable. And I really, really like that. Now let's answer some questions. I'm gonna answer some of the ones that were asked the most. I also did do a Q&A over on my Instagram too, if you wanna check out that, I'll have my Instagram right here. Another big one was if we're finding out the gender and we are, I know a lot of people love to wait and I think down the road that would be really special, but right now, I just really wanna know. I wanna decorate the nursery, buy all the clothes. And I know you can still do that too without knowing the gender, but we are gonna do something low key. I'm not really into anything crazy, crazy, but I'm really excited to find out. And if it goes to plan, emphasis on goes to plan, Mr. Cash is gonna reveal it to us. So it should be exciting. Do I have a feeling if baby is a girl or a boy? Like I had mentioned, I only feel girl because of just what I've been told about acne and having more intense morning sickness, but I've also heard people have that and then end up having boys. Obviously, either way, we are so excited too. I can picture us with either so strongly. There's not really one or the other that we're like leaning towards wanting. I am so excited either way. I had some questions if it was scary telling people early on. I think this was because I mentioned on Instagram that I told my parents the day after I found out. And then we also told Aiden's family like the weekend after because we ended up seeing them in Florida, which was really nice. And I would say no, because I am close to my family. And if something did happen, I would want them to know and be praying for me and you know, be there to support me through that. And so I did not I was so excited to tell them. And kind of on that note, I got some questions if we recorded those reactions. And I have very sporadic videos. I have my parents telling them. I have most of my family members. Our friends are the ones that I didn't get everyone's because we just told our friends so sporadically. 
And so I'm still debating if I want to put together a video because it's kind of jumbled and all over the place. But if you'd like to see that, please let me know because I can probably insert that in some sort of video, but I think I only have like around eight minutes of footage. I had some questions about what I'm planning to do for birth. And I want to say that I of course have this idea of what I want right now, but I am holding so loosely onto this because I am very much aware that life is out of my control and this is something that ultimately whatever way we can deliver the baby in the safest way possible i'm all for so right now we are planning on doing a hospital birth with my midwife i like where i'm going because it's not just one midwife they have actually five i believe and you rotate between them between your appointments so depending on if you have any of them during your birth you kind of know them you have a relationship with them which i really like and i also am really thankful that i found midwives who also deliver at a hospital because i know that that's not always the case i just feel like there's so many options now which is so nice to have um and i'm also working with a doula i think especially being in a hospital i like the idea of having a doula just to help with interventions i want interventions i don't again i'm not married to anything right now i am having a very free spirit about this all but i feel really confident with where i'm at right now yeah when it comes to being in a hospital i feel very comfortable being in hospitals they're not a place that i associate with kind of like fear and worry which I know a lot of people do feel that way, which I think is totally valid. Especially my mom had a really traumatic accident in eighth grade. And I just remember seeing the care she received at a hospital and the nurses that she had, which I know every situation can be different, but just seeing that level of care in such a stressful situation that was really, really emotional and difficult. That was a really positive experience. Yeah, I just feel like I'm at a place where I feel very comfortable being in a hospital, especially for this. And so, yeah, I feel very confident in that. When it comes to specifics, I'm obviously still early along, so I don't have all the specifics nailed down. And I also just mean this in the nicest way possible too, because I know everyone feels very strongly about how they did it, how their sister, their mom, whatever did it, but I am not looking to be swayed in one direction or the other either. I feel like no matter the route that I decide to go, I want it to be entirely my decision, our decision, what's best for our baby, and that's just where I'm at with that. I also had some questions about imposter syndrome with being a young mom. Am I nervous? A lot of people said you seem really young. I definitely felt this at first. When I first found out I was pregnant, I would wake up in the middle of the night, watch like breastfeeding videos, newborn videos. I felt very out of my league, but the further I get in my pregnancy, I just feel like my body is made for this. Of course, there is so much that I'm gonna learn. There's so much that I'm just not gonna learn until we actually have this baby, but I'm going to equip myself with prayer, a lot of research and do all the classes and learning that I can. But ultimately from the moms that I know, they learn the most when they were thrown into it. I know that I get my confidence from him and he is ultimately going to be the one who brings me through. And again, surrounding myself with just positive stories I think is really helpful, not in a way where you're dealing with toxic positivity by any means. I tried to be really real in this video. I'm 24 right now, I'll be 25 when we have the baby and I feel plenty old enough to have a child. And you know, I would, learn by being thrown into it if I was 35 versus 25. So I feel confident. And I do feel like this was something that we prepared for financially. So in that way, I do feel very comfortable. But of course, I don't know all the changes that are gonna happen. Like anything in my life that has felt like a reward, I've learned the most just by being thrown into it, moving to New York City, getting married. Also had some questions about privacy with the baby, especially being on social media. And this was something that I've thought about, you know, way before even getting pregnant by any means, but I do expect to have a large level of privacy with the baby. I of course don't know what that looks like right now. And I imagine it'll be very similar to how I am with my marriage and my videos. I mean, for the most part, these videos are about me, cash is in them too. And I share the hobbies and the things that I am enjoying. But for the most part, I do keep, and I think especially over the years, I've been online for a very long time, but I have tried to become more private with certain things. And so, yeah, this is something that we both are just praying about and figuring out how we want to go about. But that is something that I do have top of mind. I had a few people ask if I'm going to switch to just doing baby content. No, I know right now there has been quite a bit. This is obviously so new in such a 
large part of my life and I have been sharing quite a bit lately. Still plan to share about health, fitness, all the things that I enjoy individually because I do think that's important and I know that I am going to change a lot becoming a mom. I do still want to hold fast to a lot of those things that do make me feel like me and so I am going to sprinkle in motherhood baby stuff where I can but this is not becoming a family channel. You don't have to worry. And lastly, what am I most excited for? I think I'm most excited just entirely to raise a child. I am someone who has always felt a strong inclination to just nurture and really bring up and take care of things. That's very much a part of who I am and it's something that makes me feel very fulfilled and I know right now that's taking care of cash and doing things within my marriage and taking care of plants and I know a child is just next level it's going to be like a love that we have both never experienced there have been so many instances when we've been like traveling recently walking around doing normal things and we've thought this would just be so much better with a child right now i feel like we're really at that phase where it just feels so right i am so excited to see aiden become a dad one of the things that i've always held so close it was one of the reasons why i knew i wanted to marry him but we would spend these late nights in central park and we would just lay on the grass and talk i remember we were asking each other what we were most excited for in life and he just shared his passion and desire to become a dad and to raise children that is something that i'm just so excited to see him grow into that role too i know that there are going to be a ton of just lifestyle changes and things that are different but i'm really thankful that i'm around just again a lot of positive influences when it comes to children influences that don't see children as burdens and these are things that i think have really helped me be really excited about the next years to come okay i know that was so long i hope you guys enjoyed this video i hope it was informative again i just wanted to say that this is my experience it is not necessarily going to be yours i know i watched so many of these videos when i first found out that i was pregnant i hope it's really apparent that this is something that i am just so looking forward to and so grateful for the love that we have both felt from you guys so thank you and yeah i'll catch you guys in the next video Bye.